My name is Miriam Wallace and I'm asking for your vote to be the next mayor of Somerville. I want to see a sustainable and affordable Somerville with city government accountable to people, not developers and special interests. I'm a union leader in SEIU Local 509, a member of Our Revolution Somerville and other grassroots organizations. I'm a mom, a wife, a homeowner, and a lifelong resident of Somerville. I'm part of a movement for long overdue change in how our city government is run. I'm running to empower the residents of our community. That starts with the new mayor and changing stagnant leadership. I'm running because I love Somerville. I'm running because what we love about our community is threatened by the lack of affordable housing and good local jobs. Our community is also threatened by climate change. Somerville should be a leader of innovation towards a Green New Deal taking advantage of our natural assets to be a model for in sustainability in preparation for more extreme weather. While rents skyrocketing and development is displacing so many residents, the mayor is bankrolled by tens of thousands of dollars in campaign donations from out-of-town developers. When Mayor Curtitoni was elected into office in 2003, the average rent for a two-bedroom apartment was $1,444. Today, the average rent is about 2200 for the same space. Homeowners' tax bills are skyrocketing, and the city's debt payments for Assembly Square and Union Square infrastructure and the Green Line extension in the new high school haven't even begun. Our mayor is out of touch with the burdens that residents, especially seniors and small businesses, face. Let's look at one example, Assembly Row. When Federal Realty Investment Trust planned to build a 500-unit luxury apartment complex, it sought a waiver from the requirement that all developers set aside 20% of the proposed unit for affordable housing. Instead, Federal Realty proposed the old standard of 12.5%. The mayor intervened and made a backroom deal without the consent or collaboration of the community that resulted in only 6.5% being set aside for affordable housing at Assembly Row and funds for Somerville Community Corporation to buy or build additional affordable housing off-site in the future. Somerville will be lucky if those additional funds ever meet the 12.5% threshold. At a time when rents in Somerville are unaffordable, Mayor Curtitoni allowed a developer to have dozens more luxury units at market rate. This will never happen under my administration. Part of the problem is we need you and more people involved in our democracy. Another problem is public relations machine that mayor, the mayor has built. We need substance, not surface. Did the mayor push for bike lanes, or was he pushed to adopt them? Did the mayor initiate an MBTA protest, or he just ride the T? Are banners on City Hall proclaiming a progressive Somerville government really sincere, or are they just surface? Talk is cheap. When you scratch the surface of City Hall, you realize that Somerville is retreating from service to its residents and small businesses. We can't continue in this direction. The only way to solve difficult problems is to bring people together and build a movement for real change. I was born and raised here. My mom emigrated from Sicily, and my dad worked at Cane's Potato Chips Factory in Medford, back when one job could provide for a family. I married my best friend, Marty, 27 years ago. Now our two sons, Joseph and Patrick, who graduated from Somerville schools, are both proud union electricians. As a frontline social worker for 22 years, I've dedicated my life to keeping children safe and helping families in crisis. As a union leader, I have negotiated with employers and won good benefits for working people. Access to good jobs, reliable transportation, affordable housing, excellent public schools, and treatment for mental illness and substance abuse not only stabilizes families, but strengthens our entire community. Now more than ever, we need a mayor of Somerville who can bring people together and not career politicians who work for the 1%. Wealthy developers have got done very well on the backs of Somerville residents. They have shortchanged our construction workers and not hired nearly enough local people. While developers have made huge profits, residents have not been protected. 
and huge nonprofits like Tufts University and partners aren't paying their fair share. I'm running to be your mayor, but I'm not good at spin and deflection. If you want a mayor that will be authentic and genuine, empower and collaborate, and has a progressive vision for how Somerville can be a better city, I ask for your vote. It's time to put people and our environment first. My top priorities include a Green No Deal for Somerville, good jobs for Somerville residents, quality public schools, affordable housing and home ownership, government that is accountable to people, not special interests. By putting people first, we can build a movement for a better Somerville. That's why I don't take contributions from real estate developers or corporate PACs. This September, Somerville voters will have a choice for a new mayor. I hope that I will earn your vote in September. For more information about my campaign, visit Marianne, the number four, mayor.org. And thanks for watching.